there was so much confusion and debate about what I was and where I fit in and you know do like white people like me do black people like me you know do rich people like me do poor people like me there was there's always so much debate about me not fitting into society most of the time that there is a little box around what a musician is i think today even more so than 10 years ago there was lots of preconceived ideas that were where people were judgmental and i think it is because i was a woman where people were like oh, how could you talk about revolution and wear nail polish or lipstick? Like, those th two things don't sit together. And, you know, and this, this was from the industry where when I was trying to get record deals where people would be like, oh, if you're really serious about revolution, then you need to come in looking like Bob Marley. You know, you can't come in wearing stilettos and lipstick. When did you decide to be this exotic figure, Grace Jones, this androgynous, macho, attractive? When did you Always decide to be larger than life? <laughs> when did I decide to be myself, really? Yeah. I think Are that's you, what is it this? comes down to. Yeah. Yes, um, my family was very religious, a very strict Jamaican family, you know, with a very English colonial type of upbringing and school and all of that. And I realized after I left home that I was not myself. That was not me. I was living their life, what they wanted. And I wanted to discover first uh, about life and then decide what I wanted from life what made me happy, what was easy for me. I feel more established as a woman and as a musician. Um, I feel accomplished. I definitely feel different at 26 than I did at like 23 or 24. Maybe I was having a quarter-life crisis. <laughs> the way I thought about love changed. The way I thought about myself changed. The way I thought about music changed. I thought about those things before from a very self-righteous and selfish place. Now I think about those things not as an accessory, but as a necessity. <laughs> Because I guess I was also like quite antsy about, you know, just that general vibe, you know, the music mm. business and, you know, that kind of th expectancy that you're going to be that the kind of sexy lady that they want you to be. <laughs> when, when, whoever they are. Yeah. But do you know what I mean? The but I think there was a, there's a naturalness to, to you. I remember as, as, you know, I think well, we're not too far off the age, but when I, when I was growing up, like I mean, some of your songs are st uh, in my head are revered, revered as a strong like soundtrack to my childhood in the 80s and whatnot do you know what I mean early 90s so I think your persona I guess the only way I could can, can class it is it's the the attractiveness combined with that MIA style don't give a fuck well, it's like, I mean I think you have you know to be I mean? militant I mean it's like yeah if I can't stand up in my in my boots and just, mm. you know, it's that thing of like drawing a kind of a, a power and energy mm. from, like you were saying, like being in the moment and being there. And I think we're all kind of like rebels. I mean, I've always had, a, mm. I've always wanted to break through yeah. the, the, just the stereotype, mm. yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah, I do. Roots. <laughs> They're just going with the flow, to be honest. The self-respect and the self-love, I mean, it's an ongoing challenge and process. I mean, it's never-ending. For me, it's been more of a process reaching that, um, which is, you know, hard, but beneficial and character-building, essentially. That's kind of, like, part of it, to be as honest as I can and just chat about stuff that's going on inside me or in my immediate environment. There's definitely subjects and messages that I'm not trying to convey at all. 
you know, like materialism and I hate listening to songs that are just talking about what designer clothes they've got on and how much money they've got. That really pisses me off, to be honest. I've been through spouts of heavy materialism and so that's how it kind of started. Like, you know, my mum forcing me into charity shops. Bizarre, you know what I mean? And um, I used to hate it. You know, I was that adamant that, you know, I wanted to fit in that bag. And from that, you know, I quickly learned that it was just, it wasn't going to go like that. So I just had to start looking cool somehow else, you know what I mean? But if you ask me, you know, all my clothes are from charity shops. Everything's secondhand. And, you know, actually, when you take a break from it and you zoom out from it, it's, a lot of it's unnecessary. <laughs>